What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, division rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel, the sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you get around to watching this, guys. Once again, Stephen Heider, Gate City Sports Channel. All right, y'all, today's topic. I received a lot of requests, guys. Um, over the last two weeks, man, I, I've definitely been hit up quite a bit in the comments section asking me if I would do a film study on Michigan State defensive tackle and recently undrafted rookie free agent, UDRFA, signing of the Philadelphia Eagles, Raekwon Williams. I got to tell you guys, um, I knew a little bit about this kid before I ran the actual like film session I was going to do. So, I mean, I had a, a kind of a basis of how good of a player this was. If I'm going to be honest, guys, I was a little shocked that he didn't get drafted. Um, I'm not completely sure of the circumstances that surrounded why this young man was not drafted, but I can tell you, um, out of the film studies I've done, and I know this was not the greatest defensive line draft, which really makes this even more curious to me because with, you know, not with this being such a kind of, eh, I wouldn't say it's a bad one, but it's not a good one by any stretch of the imagination. It's a little shocking that a guy like this went undrafted. Sometimes when stuff like this pops up, guys, it's some weird crap that, that brings people down. I don't know if there was an injury related. Who knows? I'm not sure. But I took some time. I watched the film. I got a pretty good feel for this guy. And to be honest with you, I think this kid's here to, to legitimately compete. I know a lot of you guys are high on this kid. Um, I thought the film was pretty good. Um, this is a kid, when I watched the film, I felt like should have been drafted. And I feel like has a legit you know, chance to compete and make this roster. Um, it's really going to depend upon, in my opinion, how many defensive tackles the Eagles keep. But I can tell you, I would put him right in that four, five, and six guy. Those four through six guys that should be back of the end roster guys if they keep four or five defensive tackles, depending on what the Eagles do here. Um, listen, Raquan Williams, defensive tackle, Michigan State. All right, Joe, let's go ahead. Let's roll to film. Every opening drive. That's in jeopardy here on third and 19. Garrett Groshek finds very little room. Let's talk about Raekwon Williams. Let's talk about scheme fit. So really when I talk about scheme fit, guys, I'm really talking about alignment. And as you're talking about a defensive tackle, there are a few things you have to know when it comes to defensive tackle play, okay? Uh, this even comes from guys like myself who primarily played offense. When I played defense, I played a little bit of linebacker, mostly safety. Never really played down on the line except for, you know, earning, you know, you got to earn your stripes a little bit, you know, when you're younger. But I was never really a defensive line guy. I just, I'm not built like that, guys. But the basics that everyone should know. You have to know the difference between what a nose tackle is, a three technique, a five technique. You will get some variability here. You can see guys that will play a, a four technique. So a four technique would be like kind of on the inside shoulder of a tackle. Instead of that outside being right up on him or even towards the outside of the shoulder, it would be towards the inside shoulder of a tackle. Um, and then you have something called a shade technique. So sometimes they call them a one or they call it a zero shade. And that's just basically when you're coming across the face of the guard angled in towards basically the center, all right? That's a shade technique. The other thing we'll need to know, guys, for our discussion today is we're going to need to know the difference between what playing a one gap and playing a two gap is, all right? One gap, single gap containment. You got the A gap, the B gap, the C gap, whatever gap. You have that gap. You take care of that gap. Two gap. Basically, this is a run quite often in 34 fronts. This is one that defensive tackle has dual gap responsibilities. He might be playing both the A and the B gap. He might be playing the B and the C gap. He, he's got two separate responsibilities within that gap assignment, okay? So he's going to try to stay centered on that, not be turned to one or the other, so that way he can make a play on either side, all right? And the last thing you need to know is the difference between playing an over- and an under, an over concept is when the three technique is aligned towards the closed side of the field. So where the tight end is, if there's dual tight ends, then you have to assign which tight end will be your closed side pre-game. But nonetheless, three technique towards the closed side of the field means you're in a over set. But if you have the three technique on the open side of the field, the side opposite of the tight end, right, then you're in an under concept, okay? The Eagles run both. But, you know, you, there's a difference here. I, I tend to see much more two-gapping in the under technique than I do see in the over technique. But you could technically play, you know, two-gap or one-gap in either of those fronts, whether it's an over or an under. As I look at Raekwon Williams, I think the Eagles 
were a good marriage for this young man. Because I think that he's really, he's a guy that can play the three technique very efficiently, and he can be very good in that zero shade kind of one technique. I don't think you want this kid playing the nose tackle, and I don't think you want this kid playing two gap. But I think you put him as a, you know, a one or a zero shade or a three technique, or four technique, playing a one gap system in an over front. I think this young man will do quite well. All right, y'all, let's get further into it. Play action on first down. All right, guys. So let's start with the obvious when we come down to breaking down the film on Raekwon Williams and what I saw. To begin with, let's talk about his pass rush abilities. Now, it's probably no surprise to anyone here just judging the type of technique you're seeing this kid play. That he's not exactly a pass rusher. Um, I will say some positives for the young man. Like, he has the ability to push the pocket a little bit, but, I mean, this isn't a guy that's going to break through clean unless there's just a complete miss block or a design flaw there that allows him to get a free release at your quarterback. But he can be a little disruptive in terms of the interior and pushing that pocket back, making it harder for the quarterback to step up into the pocket. That you could see. But he's not the greatest of the pass rushers, guys. I mean, we certainly have guys that are going to be much better at pass rushing than he will be. But there is some ability there. It was identifiable on film a little bit that he can disrupt the pocket a little. But nonetheless, more development would need that curve. Here's Taylor. First carry. A flag down. As he's... All right, guys. On this play here, I want to talk about what I know, what I can see and what I know. And then I'll project a little bit with what I think is going on here but I can't be definitive on it just because there's just not enough to go off of yet. So what I do know is, is that's a 43 over defense. That's the defensive line alignment. There is a 43 over. If you look over, you'll see that in this particular situation, Raekwon Williams is playing a zero shade or even a nose, a true nose in that particular position. I think it's more of a zero shade. And you can see that the three, so the person playing the three technique is to his left over that, basically, that right guard on the offensive line. So the left defensive tackle over the right guard. Now, if you follow it through, you can see one of the defenders that's to the right. Now, if you go to the opposite, to the right of Raekwon Williams, he's playing more of a five technique. And then the guy that's on the farthest to the left, he's all the way outside of the area of the tight end. So he's really, it's, to me, I would call that a seven. Some people might say that's a nine, a wide nine. I'd call that a seven technique personally. But that's the way that they came out aligned in this formation, guys. What you see here to me is, is this is me projecting here, guys. I thought the way that he attacked it coming off the snap, getting into the center, and engaging that center and holding him up while trying to push backwards would indicate to me he's probably two-gapping there. Raekwon comes up, engages the center straight up, and it looks like to me he's playing both A-gaps, left and right. I don't know that to be 100% certain, guys, to be quite honest. But that's what it looks like. Normally when you do that, you're doing that so you can try to pick which lane the running back is going to go through and then fill it in. Unfortunately, what ends up happening is the five technique ended up getting pancaked on the ground. So when Raekwon tried to shoot to that, basically what I would probably call one of the A gaps or even a B gap, what ends up happening is a running back just picks the other gap, but the guy got pancaked, and there's a huge gainage there. But to me, this is some of the reason why I say, like, I'm not so sure if this is a guy you want being your nose down in and down out or playing a lot of two gap for you. I think if you play him as a zero shade, it's a little different story. On third and two, he'll get the carry. Taylor in trouble, trying to fight. He will not get there. If you put Raekwon Williams in a zero shade or a three technique or a one technique, that's a bad, bad man, guys. I'm telling you right now. Let him play in a more of a natural one gap flow, which is what most 43 teams will do. I mean, you're going to get some two gaps even in a 43, but it's primarily a 34 front. Man, you put this kid in position to do really well, and man, I'll tell you what, this kid can shoot the gap and you're not moving him. If he has a single gap assignment, he's a tough guy to move out of that gap, guys. I mean, he's he's phenomenal at saying, I know this is my gap. Nobody's moving me up out this gap. It's not happening. I'll take on the guard, the center, the fullback, everybody. Watches. He's going to take this, go into the gap. He takes the guard and just stuffs him in the backfield. All right, guys, my final thoughts just to put some clarity on this young man. Are pretty simple guys i think this is a kid that if you play him as a zero shade a one or a three technique alongside of guys like javon hargraves and fletcher cox this guy could be pretty disruptive on the back end of your roster i think he's one of a few guys on this roster with really you know run stuffing potential you know 
You got Anthony Rush, which you guys already know I'm high on. I like that kid a lot. You know, you got guys like Fletcher Cox. You got, got guys like Javon Hargraves. Both of those guys are, are pretty good at stuffing the run themselves. And then you got a kid like this, Raekwon Williams, who's also really good, you know, run stuffer. God, it's hard to move out of that, that assigned hole. Put him in a one-gap system to where he doesn't have to worry about playing those stupid two gaps and, and worrying about filling two holes and just let him play and let him say, you're not moving me up out of this gap. You know, the kid can have time to develop more into a two-gap type defensive tackle. You can give him time to develop like that. I'm not going to say the kid's a lock to make the roster, guys. I would never say that about a young man like this. But I will tell you this. I definitely think this is a young kid to really keep your eyes peeled on. I think this kid has a legitimate shot at making this roster. Him making the roster would not shock me at all. And that's pretty big words, guys, because I'm telling you right now, we have really good depth at defensive tackle, guys. Between Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargraves, right? Malik Jackson, Hassan Ridgeway, Anthony Rush, Raekwon Williams, Albert Huggins. Like, I mean, guys, we go pretty deep at defensive tackle. Like, this is a very healthy group for the Eagles. All right, y'all. Y'all know my opinion on this, so I want to know, what do you think? All right, y'all. Tell me your opinion. What do you guys think about Raekwon Williams? Give me your potential, what you think about him making the roster. Like, what do you think about this young man in terms of being a future piece for the Eagles? All right, y'all. Leave your thoughts below. You know what time it is and how we end these videos. We do a little something like E-A-G-L-E-S. All right, y'all. Let's go, Eagles.